Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Yeah, pretty, pretty slow day so far. Um, you know, not much happened since the last update. I only want to give you a quick intraday update and just highlight a couple of things that I actually didn't mention in the previous video. But if you are interested in checking out the daily chart, then feel free to watch the last video. It is still pretty much up to date, but it also covered the daily time frame, which I typically do once a day, not always, but typically. So this is a shorter time frame, and we have seen overnight a possible five wave move to the upside here in white. Few people asked me if the yellow count is now formally invalidated. No, that's not the case. Um, yellow is still valid, okay? It's just that we can identify a minimum, or let's say, let's say the minimum requirements for a five wave move up are complete. But first of all, the move up from the 6th of September low, that move up, it is questionable, okay? It is, yes, it's a five wave move up, but it is still a diagonal pattern only in my view. So we're not dealing with an impulse and you can sometimes easily mistake corrective waves for, um, for diagonal structures. So I don't trust it. And bear in mind, even with a five wave move up, it is only the first confirmation that we need um, to establish that, well, wave two in white here bottomed on the 6th of September. Yeah? It's only the very first confirmation. So the next confirmation will come with a pullback into the support region. This hasn't changed since the last update. It's still defined between 53,836 and 56,216. So that is still relevant there for a, for the B wave pullback, okay? Um, bear in mind that B wave support areas are weak. So my thesis would be that this is going to be a B wave if the pullback is corrective. And if, if as long as we're holding 53,830, I'm watching for higher in wave C. Probabilities have slightly shifted towards the white count, but I'm not going to dismiss the yellow scenario, absolutely not. This, uh, you know, th this is still valid. You might say, okay, but it's a five wave move. Yeah, but interpreting something as a five wave move is also to a degree subjective. So what we always need to see is five waves up and three waves down. Even though, yes, I'm slightly leaning to the white count, but I'm definitely, I, you know, it, it's not like, oh yeah, 80% probability for the white count. I mean, yellow is still in the game and it will, the bears will make a comeback with a break below 53,830. Also, please note that the context of this five wave move up is a mess because this rally is also just a three wave move. So the rally to the 8th of August high. So while the bulls seemingly are making a comeback, the context puts this five wave move up into a questionable, or let's say this five wave move up from the 6th of September low, it is within a questionable overall context. And that just means it's less reliable, all right? Um, it still allows us to add a support area and we have an area for a trade potentially, you know, if you wanna take the trade, there is a support area to watch. Now, the move up, as I said, fulfilled the minimum requirement for a five wave move. I see the potential for maybe one more high. I would prefer one more high for a clearer five wave move. Uh, that would, in my opinion, increase probabilities for the white count. But if we go down now, it's still a five wave move. Support area is defined. This is the main risk area, okay? And 53,830 is the main risk level. And below that level, the B wave pullback starts to become less likely and probabilities for the yellow count increase again. We just have to let the price now, or let's say we have to give the price now the space to possibly retrace to 53,830 if it needs to in this white wave count. Can even go lower, it's a B wave. B wave sometimes overshoot to the downside, which makes the structure even more challenging. But I'm primarily going to watch this support uh, zone. And there is not much that's happening right now. A little bit of downside pressure. Maybe the pullback is starting. We always have to consider that is possible once we have a five wave move up. But um, for now, there is still a potential for maybe one more high. And this could be within the context of, for example, an A, 
B, C structure in an extended fifth wave. So that's just something to highlight. Okay, so you could still get one more high. That would, as I said, increase in my view probabilities that in the subsequent pullback, a higher low will hold. For now, all eyes need to be on the orange support region, specifically 58,000, no, 53,830. And the uh, to the upside, 59,515, should we get another high. But, you know, be ready for that pullback. All I'm saying is one more high would give it give us a clearer five wave move up and would maybe make that yellow count a little bit less likely. Before we close the video, quick reminder tomorrow, it's again Friday, late tomorrow, I'm going to send out um, the newsletter. So if you haven't registered and you're interested in checking out our newsletter, there's a direct link in the description, it's free, or you go to our website, mcoglobal.com and under resources, you'll find the newsletter section, you can register here, as I said, it's free and typically includes some stuff about mindset, an outlook for the next week, stuff about MCO, infos about markets. Last week there was a NASDAQ update in there and a cryptocurrency update, can't remember which crypto it was, but yeah, there are updates um, and, and chart links and so on. So check it out if you're interested. Um, as I said, the link is in the the link is in the description. And yeah, I think there is not much more to say about Bitcoin at this stage. So I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.